Congratulations! You found the Sand to Pearls Stock Market Commentary for Market Week ending Friday, February 6, 2015. Market Breadth With this past week's market advance, our bull bear point and figure ratio rose from 0.79 to 1.13, returning back into bullish territory. The total count of securities in bullish or bearish patterns rose 6% to 2,694. The count of bearish stocks decreased 11%, while the count of stocks in bullish patterns increased 30%. The Santu Pearls PNF Market Breadth Summary Chart shows us a market now one consecutive week in bullish territory. Paid subscribers have access to the Open Office Calc data from which the chart is generated. You may become a paid subscriber by visiting s2pmarketsignal.com, clicking on Membership, and clicking Sign Up. For those who are interested, a free two-week trial subscription is available. The well-known market breadth indicator, the NASDAQ McClellan Summation Index, rose 56 points for the sixth rise in 16 weeks. At a negative 155.09 points, it continues below all nine tops above plus 100 and above all six bottoms below minus 100 in the last three years. Market Gauge Volume Analysis In this week's volume analysis, all indexes ended in neither accumulation nor distribution mode. In the last two weeks, the NASDAQ 100 Trust had zero accumulation days and zero distribution days. Of the other indexes, both the Diamonds Trust and the S&P 500 Deposit Receipts ended in neither accumulation nor distribution mode. Accumulation days are counted when the index closes up on higher volume than the prior market day, while distribution days occur when the index closes down on volume higher than the prior market day. Last week also, the NASDAQ 100 Trust ended in neither accumulation nor distribution mode. Momentum. The CCI 20 daily, in a Woody's downtrend, now has four consecutive days above zero for a possible change in trend, but at 115.69 is outside the range for a valid zero-line reject entry signal. In Woody's CCI trading system, six consecutive bars above or below zero are required for a change of trend. The weekly CCI 20 of the NASDAQ Composite Index began a Woody's uptrend 29 weeks ago, while the daily CCI 20 began a Woody's downtrend three weeks ago. With the CCI 20 weekly at 46.27 rising from last week, we continue in the trade begun after the Friday 123 long zero line reject entry signal. We will continue following the result of this trade simulation in next week's commentary. Industry rotation the last two weeks. All of the top five industries are positive and all of the bottom five are negative. Bullish, brokers, S&P retail, and banks have entered the top five. Disk drives and brokers have left the bottom five. Gold and silver has left the top five and entered the bottom five. Oil has left the top five. Bearish, REITs, and CompTech have entered the bottom five. Oil Services has left the bottom five and entered the top five. Focus this week from www.davidstockmanscontracorner.com A Very Pernicious Partnership Keynesian Money Printers and Wall Street Gamblers by David Stockman and a few points from the article. So, if the U.S. economy did generate new jobs at the 4 million annual rate implicit in the November-January average, 
How is it that not only is the money market still pinned to the zero bound, but that the Fed continues to energetically waffle over how many more months it will remain there? It is the product of a pernicious partnership of convenience between the Keynesian money printers who dominate the Fed and the gamblers who inhabit the Wall Street casino. Together they virtually smother any recognition that the current juxtaposition is just plain nuts. Due to worldwide financial repression and the scramble for yield caused by ZIRP, there has been a massive overinvestment in capacity to produce energy and raw materials, transportation, shipping, and distribution services, industrial intermediates, and finished consumer products, including luxury items and BMWs, among numerous others. So this two-decade-long spree of planetary malinvestment is already causing commodity prices to tumble, and manufactured products will not be far behind. In a word, virtually every central bank in Asia and Europe is involved in a deliberate policy of exchange rate depreciation and therefore export of deflation, including enormous downward wage pressures into the world economy. At the same time, the phony 5.7% domestic unemployment rate reported this morning has nothing to do with full employment. The relevant number in the report is that there are still 100 million working age Americans who do not have jobs, and only 45 million of them are on OASI retirement benefits. And that says nothing about the tens of millions of job holders who are employed far less than a 40-hour work week. In short, there is a surfeit of available labor at home and abroad, meaning 3 to 4 percent wage gains are not coming down the pike anytime soon or ever. So if that's what the Fed is waiting for, then the so-called liftoff may not be coming even this year. And in any event, the trivial 25 BPS increases in the funds rate that may eventually come have nothing to do with interest rate normalization or the return of honest price discovery in the casino. And that suits the needs of the Wall Street gamblers just fine. Thank you for tuning in for this week's Santu Pearl's Stock Market Commentary, compiled by Donald Pearl, www.s2pmarketsignal.com. Hoping that you are enjoying a peaceful and pleasant weekend, that you have a wonderful week coming up, and wishing you true success.